must say we are extremely pleased and honored that you all came here. Of course, it's also one event uh, which we not celebrate, but which we will be discussing tomorrow afternoon is that we will move the German Research Center in Mohenjo-Daro to uh, Oman. Aachen University has since four years uh, a private <coughs> university in Muscat, the German University of Technology. And uh, thanks to the generousness of uh, the Omani owners, Sheikh Abdullah al Salmi, uh, uh, we can establish our um, research center in the ocean in Oman. Now, this is also one of the reasons why we meet, because with discussions of several of you, we think that it would be a good idea to have somewhere a focal point for the region, in the region, and from where we can continue researching and maybe we can in future have a kind of communication system that from Oman we can communicate with all your institutions, have exchange, have regular meetings and perhaps meetings on the level we are doing now that meets approximately 20 people, also from different disciplines, to discuss mechanisms, not the details of uh, which part comes from where, but maybe questions like why or for which reason is the part traveling and what is happening, that means on the, I would call it the hyper level of the mechanisms behind. I think that's enough at the moment for the introduction. I hope we will have vivid discussions also amongst each other. We will have a joint lunch uh, today around uh, 1 o'clock where we all go together uh, to a restaurant not far from here. Uh, this evening we will have a short uh, look at the exhibition uh, which is hanging in uh, the foyer. This exhibition was made by UNESCO. Uh, we made it, UNESCO paid it. And it was exhibited last year, January, in Paris, in the headquarters, as a kind of additional promotion start for another promotion campaign uh, for uh, Mohenjo Daro. And uh, as the, uh, uh, Dr. Klin has said already, uh, the German uh, uh, the Foreign Affairs or the Consulate General of Karachi will take over this exhibition, and most probably it will be shown in Karachi in September, October. And End of September, everything would be for Dr. Kacker. We, uh, Germany wants, together with UNESCO, give this uh, exhibition as a donation then later to uh, perhaps the museum in Mohenjo Daro, or it may be used as a traveling exhibition. All these are activities in which we hope we can include you in the future. And uh, let me start now with a short introduction to the topics, what our thoughts are as a kind of stimulus for the further discussion. Um, everybody knows this wonderful citadel of Mohenjo Daro. It doesn't work. No. I'm in uh, the. I think it's this is right on the screen in Alcaraz. <laughs> Just uh, for a short revision, we have the three earliest civilizations, uh, Indo-Slavic, Mesopotamia, Egypt. I don't repeat that for our colleagues, but for those who are not so familiar with it, the phenomenon is, and this will play an important role for the understanding of Mojibaro, of course, all three civilizations, as you are knowing, are uh, close uh, to uh, uh, large river systems. Um, this is a map which Maurizio did once, uh, which shows the, especially the interrelation between Mesopotamia and Egypt, with, uh, 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 which was, uh, after World War II, still in these areas quite unknown, and only through the research, through uh, Carl and this again is not really working. 
Aachen University of Technology, uh, where we have Namaska, whatever it is, where nowadays we have a clear picture uh, uh, regarding the interrelation of the two early civilizations, Mesopotamia and Egypt. Maurizio found the pot, uh, 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 his famous pot, in Rasa Junais here. He also was looking for connections to Egypt, but as far as I know, up to today, no connection of Egypt with this interregion, which uh, 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 is proved nowadays with this interconnection to the Matra coast, where Roland uh, and his colleagues will be talking about, where this interregion uh, around 2000 is one larger unit of activities. Um, we have the different uh, developments and in uh, the Merida sequence we have, for the, we have for the first time through the research of uh, Jarish uh, an A-ceramic Neolithic settlement uh, clearly proving that this uh, cultural development of the Indus Valley was independent from the other ones and you remember Wheeler's uh, famous interpretation who said uh, that uh, Mohenjo-Daro the Indus uh, civilization as an urban civilization uh, was a kind of export of Mesopotamia and his reconstructions in the museum show that. So this is an old map with the extent of uh, uh, the, the sites of uh, Indus Valley. This is a map which shows again uh, the interrelation and what we want to discuss in the coming days is of course at first uh, this uh, huge system of the Indus River with the questions where might be uh, the origins of what I call Mohenjo-Daro in its mature phase where we do not have it up to today, we do not have the settlement where from the technical point of view, for example, the, develop, the development in relation to this also fantastic invention of the burnt brick. You have to imagine this proportion 1 to 2 to 4 with the size 7, 14, 28 is even to learn today German and I think European standard for the production of bricks. That means this construction material is 5,000 years ago the optimized construction form out of the width of the palm of the hand developed, one, what we call it the German Einhand Siegel, one hand brick where you can have the tool in one hand and the brick in the other and you are very fast. So we have some technical innovations which are there, but we have up to now obviously not the place where this well technology, or this drainage technology, the construction technology developed. And we have different hypotheses. One is, das tut es nicht so richtig, wir müssen gleich mal einen besseren Point hier One is uh, the area around Mojadar with the uh, Mancha Lake. And here we have in the Mancha Lake four millennium settlements uh, in the middle of the lake where the boat was already in use. And you know, this is the uh, theory, as far as I remember from Jean Francois, that with Merga, Mancha Lake, that this area might be the area where uh, the mature Arabic period developed. Uh, Mark with Harappa, uh, they are looking uh, for the development in Punjab. I don't know what about Dola Vera, which is here, uh, uh, and uh, definitely uh, not uh, the Haryana area. So these are still different areas where this phenomenon, which we might call the future, might have developed. This is the map of Rafik Mogul from his PhD, and uh, again we see uh, the different distributions of Kotinji Amri, where nowadays we have the Soti where and other uh, uh, developments in the north, uh, which show the different distributions of what we call early Harappan uh, phenomena. Now, the, concept, the concentration of the sites, I'm sorry, the map is very bad. They had fantastic maps in, uh, um, uh, in Paris. Uh, we have Mohenjo-Daro here again, we have the Matrat extension, we have this huge concentration in uh, Saurashtra, we have the discussion of the Gagahatra as a second river system, we have nowadays the huge amount of sites in Haryana uh, through Cameron and his team, and of course we have the Punjab area. Quite outside is uh, uh, um, um, the uh, legislative site in in Afghanistan, we have in the mountain areas hardly any Harappan uh, material, uh, material, another phenomenon uh, which from my point of view is not properly understood. 
So again, we have a gigantic extension over more than one billion square kilometers. And I think now more than, more than 2,000 sites are known. And if we talk about mature Harappan, we have a specific identification through pottery, through seals, not the figurines, and that's another problem of Indus Valley. The river system seems to be the limit for the distribution of terracotta figurines, which are all west of the Indus, but hardly found east of the Indus. And uh, if the figurines would have been an indication for religious practices, it would be at least not homogeneous all over uh, the Indus Valley. So we have no indication for religious uh, practices, uh, if not the water ritual as such, and here we have the biobasic platforms and drainage systems, uh, as far as I know, all over uh, the area. So somehow water most probably was not only used for hygienic purposes, and I will show you this for uh, my Nudaro, but it may have been part of a ritual, but as far as I know, this would be the only indication of uh, joint rituals. The same accounts for power systems, which I will discuss tomorrow. We have in my Nudaro up to now no indication, as you know, for any palace. The latest development is quite exciting, because Giovanni Berardi joined me with us is of the opinion that uh, the stupa is no stupa and if it would be not a stupa we would have from the architectural point of view the first structure which is something like a, a monumental. Monumentality is an aspect which is completely missing in the Indus Valley. It's not in the architecture, it's not in the production. The largest piece of art which we have is the priest king no, there is, uh, I think, one other uh, stone figure in Mohanjadara which may be 30 or 40 centimeters. Yeah. That means we are dealing only with small elements. Remember the microbeads, which we were shown by Mark, where you need a silk thread to, 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 uh, to uh, make them as a chain. Uh, even not a copper thread would be, uh, it's too thick. That means we have to do with a mechanism which is in a way unbelievable. But you have seals up here, you have seals down there, you have a kind of homogeneity of uh, the, the, the black or red or the pottery. So the question is what is the mechanism behind to use something like that? If we do not have a kind of superimposing power system like we have in Egypt and Mesopotamia, where in Egypt you have with the combination of the sacred power and the elite power a very, very strong power system which produces something like the pyramids. And in Indus Valley we cannot identify neither sacred <coughs> nor uh, profane uh, power systems dominating. There might be the argument for a third system in the power, and I will sh show you a triadic relation sacred power, profane power, profane elite power, and that would be for the profane power, and here we have specific speculations how these power systems might be looking like. Um, this is uh, Rao with uh, uh, the four different uh, subdivisions of this uh, general system, um, where he thinks a southern kind of uh, province, uh, uh, a western province, a central province, and an eastern province, I just want to uh, remember uh, or to uh, repeat what has been said. This map is from us, 1979, from my PhD, and we did for the first time, long before Greg did it, a coordination identification of more than 1,200 sites, where we identified the sites with a coordinate system, which of course nowadays is a need to study, and that would be now the next question, not only the settlements themselves, but also the relation of the settlements. And, uh, uh, beneath each other. And here we have, for example, we have the studies of McAdams Nissen, the uh, Ural countryside, with the shift and change of size in relation to the development, in relation to irrigation systems, question mark. And if we look at something like that or something like that, there must be hierarchies within the settlements, there must be interregional centers, there must be supply centers, there must be production centers, there must be management centers. And the question is, who is dominating that again? Are that the people in Mohenjo-Daro? And what is their function in relation to the Togo? I just rushed through. These are, you know, this is the record of uh, 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 Rafi. 
uh, in the uh, uh, area of Bahawalpur, enormous concentrations, uh, and we just know the amount, but uh, not uh, the, uh, the, the detailed information about the sites. So the major, uh, this is of course what you see, the major indications for Indus Valley are seal, figurines for the west side, water architecture, pottery of course, and now if we follow the latest uh, studies, of course, technologies in bead making, that means on the technical sector, identification of uh, source uh, and distribution, so we are always discussing mechanisms, but we don't ask, not yet, what is behind these mechanisms, why are these mecha mechanisms of exchange over this huge area uh, are taking place. What is a complete surprise in the traditional conception of architecture, where we say normally uh, the citadel in the west, the lower city in the east, is uh, uh, Dora Vera, <coughs> where we have they also call it now middle town and lower town, and you see how in the minds uh, of many of us, still the patterns uh, which were to, uh, 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 interpreted by Wheeler are still there, and we're always looking for an upper and a lower uh, settlement area, without then saying the upper area is the seat of, of the elite, which for Montegaro up to now we cannot say unless the stupa really will be a part of monumental architecture. Um, I will rush through this. You see the comparison uh, uh, Lothal with uh, the uh, lower, uh, with the higher citadel in the west and the uh, lower city in the east. Uh, we have it uh, uh, in Sukhothala. Uh, 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 and here, what I find quite interesting, the latest research we have also from the Japanese are these small, squarish rural settlements, which seem to be almost a square, only one square, and I didn't see in any of them something like a higher elite place or something like that. Montevideo, just for your repetition, the citadel in the west, the lower city in the east, you know this gigantic UNESCO project, this is the drainage system for uh, draining Montevideo to protect it against the soils. About 10% of the visible mound is excavated, the green ones. And uh, we have the latest reports that Montevideo is collapsing. Uh, these uh, topics are always there, but they only account for 10% excavated area. So 90% of the site still is unexcavated and we could say safe. So uh, the major information at the moment is for sites uh, safe. But as we know, and I will show you later, we found uh, 1989, about one and a half kilometer outside here is the River Indus, uh, where they constructed the spurs, architecture remains two meters underground. And what we have suggested from UNESCO is to do drilling in all directions to identify the actual site of, uh, uh, size of the site. That means Montegaro may be more than double as big as we see today. Here we have the satellite photograph. When they constructed this spur, here everything is full of wells, uh, uh, architecture. That means from the center, about one kilometer away, we know that Montegaro most probably has this size and this would make it the largest Bronze Age city in the third millennium. Another problem uh, with the sedimentation of the Indus is that most probably rural sites which were attached to this area are nowadays buried and this is why around Mohenjo-Daro and in the active alluvial Indus plain you do at the moment not find any settlement. We have no graves here, we have no production centers which all might be under five to six meters of silt according uh, to the uh, recent studies. I don't go through the history, you know that. This is a very important report, uh, which was uh, uh, by Banerjee and Samuelin, uh, published this uh, some years ago. These are the first years of excavation from 1921 to 1924. Marshall rejected this report because he said it is not unscientific, it's not uh, scientific, what is important with uh, this report is that he gives the description of the first years and that means the description of the excavation at the stupa. So if the stupa is no stupa, in this report might be the information to prove or disprove about 200 photographs were attached to this report which he refers to. 
The report does not have the photographs. We checked our photographic archive. We have all the photographs. That means in combination of his descriptions and the photographic records, we most probably are able to say much more about what the stupa was. We have Bhutto, uh, who started the international conference. We have these comparisons between Merga and Indus Valley. We have the seals with the writing, uh, uh, where Asko is our big expert. Uh, I just uh, rushed through. We have the brown seals, and uh, I mean, here we are with the Dilmun tradition and Lothal. Uh, these are the old photographs of uh, the Sint volumes with imprints of seals. So we have a lot of information. Here are again the artifacts from our research in Mohenjo-Daro, a broken bead with uh, a drill. Mark has been again a micro bead with a thread. Uh, the lithic tools, the drills, we all know that. Uh, shells where Mark of course worked in Mohenjo-Daro already well, 30 years ago on these items. And uh, here uh, we are with the architecture. You see the enormous density. This is one of our uh, low altitude, uh, uh, hot air balloon photographs. You see, and this is now very important for the reinterpretation of the site. Many parts are missing. Uh, typology of architecture. We have here repeating ground plans with a big room in front, a small room in the back. It is this row. We have uh, large architectures. Uh, Massimo has uh, written a report on this house, which has a similar pattern like a great bath. That means still we have an enormous amount of data, which are, and I have to say this is uh, at least uh, part of my fault, because we did not really continue this research with the architecture, of course, and the replacement of the objects in the architecture. We have an enormous amount of data, which still can be interpreted. Now, you see the different photographs of First Street, and you see the enormous information which was removed. This is how it's looking like today. All these structures are gone. Um, unfortunately, also during the conservation work of uh, the Department of Archaeology, uh, um, they uh, excavated these parts. Um, it was not an excavation. It was just uh, uh, cutting through by the conservation people to protect the wall against side pressure side pressure of water and all the archaeological information is lost. They found lots of figurines, nothing was recorded, they just threw it away and uh, this is one of the pities in relation to the protection of Mohenjo-Daro. Here the wells again, and that is what I was saying, we went 70 meters deep and still 70 meters under, uh, in the water, it was still continuing. And the big question was how do they construct wells like that? What is the technology behind? And uh, what we found out is that what we call in German Abteufen, they sink the wells. Normally you put a, a hardwood ring on the ground, then you erect uh, one meter of bricks, then a man goes inside the well and he takes with special shovels the sand away under this ring. And with his own weight it slowly sinks into the ground. It's a technology which recently still was used in Sint. And uh, you can imagine what an enormous technological uh, in investment it was just to construct one well that we have in Manjadara, more than 600 wells. It is the highest density in the whole history of mankind of wells inside an urban uh, concept. That means they have the enormous investments in constructing these wells. And now the question comes for the water supply, why go for water inside the city if the river is outside? Egypt and Mesopotamia takes the water by surface transport from the rivers into the city. Here they construct something like that. And now the question comes, how do they come across this idea to look for water inside the ground? Speculations say it may be out of mining, going into the ground for copper or water and then you find the water. But I mean, one has to come across this idea to go inside and to construct something like that. Here the, uh, the satellite the uh, air hot air balloon photographs, this is uh, DKG uh, South, and uh, the question would be, where is this developed? Here we only have, down to the lowest levels we know, the mature phenomenon of what we call the mature Harappan. There is no indication for any development into this uh, conception. Here old photographs, then the relation between well, 
bathing platform and drainage system, and also this we only understood after a long time. The silicon modular is so soft that when you have water, uh, within uh, a short time it's money. I remember one rain in January, the tents, it rained heavily and we got stuck up to the knees in the mud. We lost our shoes, everything was lost. So this seems to be one technical uh, reaction towards nature to keep a city, not muddy, but to drain the water out. Is that the reason for something like that? Question mark. The bathing platforms are all over and we have to see under which conditions bathing platforms are constructed. How does it come that they become a part of the standard production in such an enormous area of 1 million square kilometers over more than 1,000 kilometers distance? And how is the information traveling? Here we have the different types of uh, drain systems. And it's another, this is a well from the excavation close to the Indus uh, where they constructed the square. And you see a fully, uh, full Harappan mature two meters below uh, the surface. Now, they have the identification. Look here, you see the, the, the wedge shaped bricks. If they would have cut it through and turned 90 degrees, they would have had the real world. This technical development was not taking place. They still have the, uh, what we call, hard developer, uh, the gold uh, arch in the industry. And you see, there are many, many technical questions uh, in relation to what it is. Here, the great bath, all of you know this photograph. And I mean, it's another phenomenon that everything in Mojudar and obviously in the industrialization is made of burnt bricks and mud bricks. Now, the new conception is Dola Vera. We have in the uh, marginal areas, I don't know how it is with Matran, where they use natural stones. And of course, this is also the question of sources. The net, uh, natural stone source is 40 kilometers to the west in the Kirta and about 45 kilometers to the east, which is the uh, Rory Hills, where they have all the flint coming from. Interestingly, uh, this is the pattern of the Great Bath. Uh, you will see it with these four uh, corners. It's a seal. I don't know if there is any uh, relation with it, but uh, it is a cross form with these four corners there. And here you see now what I mean by critical conservation. Only 10% of the excavated structures at Mahanjadaro nowadays can be uh, uh, used as primary source. 90% of the information is gone due to the fact that the structures have been changed. And if I tell you, I can read a wall and I can tell you out of which period it is by the construction techniques, you can imagine that such information is of no use anymore. So here we have to take the historic photography and here the photographs become the primary source and not the structure at the site anymore. I just brush through. This is the famous well, and you see still the scars of the groves where they took out the water. You see a very nice bathing platform, uh, wedge shaped bricks, and this is how it uh, looks today. Uh, all the information is gone, the back is uh, reconstructed in the wrong way. And I think this might be removed nowadays, these uh, concrete uh, protections uh, of uh, the well itself. I don't comment very much on the UNESCO project, uh, but here these are conservation works, and uh, uh, I mean, the critics we know. Nowadays, the pumping has been stopped. It is of no use anymore. Instead, uh, a slurry cover of the bricks has been established and has been proved to be successful. The problem is that we have salts. Uh, with the two mineral phases, tenardite and mirabilite, uh, about 31 degrees, 32, 38. They change and the one mineral phase takes 300 more water. That means uh, the moment it is below 32 degrees, it takes water from the air, not from the ground, and cracks the capillaries of the bricks. And this only can be met in having a sacrificial layer on top of the bricks in which the salts are crystallizing so that the original fabric is not uh, de uh, destroyed by the, by the uh, salts anymore. This is implied nowadays, and this was with the UNESCO project, that this conception was developed. So the pumps are stopped, six million of no use. The spurs have been proved to be successful. 2010 we had the big flood, I was there, and the water was just 30 centimeters below the crest of the uh, 
um, uh, of the dams, uh, but uh, no break. This is the spur where about here they found this uh, uh, Mount Daro remains under the surface and this is one of the major tasks and it's a high demand by UNESCO for identifying the property and the buffer zone that the limits of Mount Daro can be identified uh, to be uh, protected. Just one word to the deep digging, you know this is for Wheeler, very famous, uh, with Ute Frank we did more than 100 strippings around the citadel drillings. So a mud brick platform, uh, more than 6 meters deep, is proof for the citadel, you know this uh, uh, reconstruction, simple reconstruction of ours, uh, 2,500 years, uh, five, four and a half thousand years ago. Uh, the, uh, the, the level was about 42 meters nowadays, it is 47 meters. And here we have to understand the mechanisms of the Indus, which in the north, north of Panjnad, is different from south. Uh, south of the Panjnad, with the complex meandrating behavior, the river is building up the plain. There is a calculation about 10 centimeters uh, every 100 years, and uh, this would explain why most of the site nowadays is underground, but which also would explain that all the infrastructure around Mojodaro cannot be traced. This reconstruction in the Museum of Mojodaro uh, shows uh, the great path and the platform with the Indus uh, in the back. And here we see this is the reconstruction of Wheeler, and uh, you see the architecture is very strongly influenced by the thinking of Mesopotamia, still the road in 1968 that the idea of the Indus civilization comes from uh, Mesopotamia. Now, one of our research aims, and uh, we hope that Dr. Kacker uh, can grant permission in the near future, is it only takes four to six weeks. Here we have the Madrid platform uh, uh, which we identified. Uh, by the way, the original is in Aachen, and you can see in the exhibition a facsimile of it. Uh, we got a major amount of uh, Wheeler's excavation through uh, uh, Alcock, who brought it 50 years to Aachen. We have the photographs of Wheeler of the deep digging and so on, partly interpreted but partly not, to have a sedimentological trench outside and to see, because we know this is uh, four and a half thousand years, to see how the sedimental behavior against this wall is by the river Indus. And you know, race dates still this hypothesis of a dam. Montedaro dying in mud, and so on, and so on. Many hypotheses. This trenching, not more than four or six weeks, some good sedimentologists, would answer a lot of questions for the major understanding of Mohenjo-Daro. We have the boat, one of the seals, uh, and what we found out, not only for the Indus Valley, but also for the other civilizations, it seems to be that, in addition uh, to child's urban revolution, we have at the same time, whatever this term means, a kind of revolution of transports, the change from the land transport to the water transport, which in the Indus Valley avails the enormous extension with communication. Uh, when you are in Mohenjo-Daro in summer and it rains, as I said, it's not accessible. 150 years ago, no dams, whole sint every year 20 kilometers under water. And Mohenjo-Daro as an island in the middle of it, with another few sites. So we have to understand these mechanisms in addition to the micro-studies of pottery, of beads, to understand the mechanism as a whole. And it seems to be from that time onward, the boat is already known in the fourth millennium with Mancha, because we have Lacuyo, other sites which are in the lake. And the boat is used before, but it seems to be that with the mature Harappan period, the boat becomes a major factor for communication and transport. I think Carl also will report on that. And of course, we have them at the end of the connection along the Makra coast uh, to uh, Oman, where Maurizio found the remains. Uh, and this seems to be the case in the other civilizations too. So, relation of big cities to water, to transport, to communication seems to be a major issue for the third millennium. And here we have the Mohana boats, and uh, they assemble similar uh, uh, features, whether this has to do with each other, I don't know. 
But another tragic tragedy of Mojadaro, 20 years ago we had whole villages with 15, 20 boats each. Nowadays they are all gone. Uh, the government has destroyed the boats 15 years ago because they were Dakoism, Dakoids, and the military and the police uh, damaged the boats, forced the people to go on land, and only in uh, Mancha Lake and uh, in Sakha you still have Mohana boats. I was studying this uh, fantastic phenomenon. Well, this is the flood 2010, the first time for me to have seen the Indus full of water. It's very impressive, and for me it was wonderful. One fishing boat setting the sails was sailing on it quite fast, quite speedy, indicating you now that this must have been the case in the third millennium, too. Here some people trying to risk their goods. And this is, uh, we had the luck with Arte and uh, German television. We made two films, one on the Indus itself, another one on Mohenjo-Daro. Unfortunately, the, the, the Arte film is in French and in German. And this was a simulation uh, they made. And I also would like a little bit to comment to Mark's reconstruction of Harappa. So this could be the situation. Uh, during the uh, flood period in summer where Mohenjo-Daro, like an island, uh, was within the river and the idea of uh, George in his excavations in 1965, you remember he was looking for a harbor, the idea was not too bad, though he did not find it uh, and uh, he found a lower street. Now, this is our power triangle, we have a sacred power uh, profane power, military power, and if you look at the three civilizations, of course Mesopotamia is much more complex because the power structure changes. Uh, this could be early dynastic. Indus Valley has neither elite nor sacred uh, uh, powers. It seems to be quite profane. Egypt has sacred and uh, elite power combined for a long time, which makes it uh, with the pharaoh god and king with the creation of monumental architecture everywhere. In Mohenjo-Daro, no monumental architecture at all. In Mesopotamia, you have after 2350 with Sargon, the combination of sacred and uh, uh, profane power he claims to be divine. Um, uh, Ziggurat as a monumental architecture. Uh, we have this, we can observe that in the Roman Empire at the moment you have uh, the emperor who again claims to be divine, you have the monumental architecture. A hypothesis which might be interesting to discuss. And, uh, uh, well, this was just a short uh, uh, reminiscence of the uh, uh, repeating of the construction. This is now the stupa, and as I said, uh, we all are nowadays of uh, the opinion that this is not uh, uh, a Buddhist stupa. And uh, of course, this would be adding to the question was there any central power or monumentality in the Indus Valley? Thank you very much.